we all love nextjs only if you are a react developer obviously if you are not i don't know what to say whatever the fact that next picked the most after getting its app router update it's undeniable and no doubt that it's one of the most popular react frameworks in 2024 so you read the title i modded some built in functions in nextjs first of all i built my own function around the inbuilt fetch function i have the next response modded i have some other optional functions right handle error and handle client error now what are these how it works i'm going to explain it in this video by the way did you know only 10% of you are actually subscribed i mean 90% is not even subscribed what are you doing all you have to do is just click the subscribe button and just make it gray <laughs> just do it why not So I was talking about the modded functions. First of all, let's talk about cfetch. I already have a function set up over here. This is from Postit. So if you don't know what it is, I have made a video about it, and I'll be linking it in the card if you want to check it out. So fetch is a built-in function in Next.js and in Node.js too. We all know what it does. It fetches an URL with a get post uh, delete. So what I did is I took the fetch function. Now by default, fetch does not support any generics. So if you do not know what TypeScript generics are, I'll be linking a video about that in the description. So I have this cfetch which takes a generic of t. So the best way to explain it is that it's like a function of a function in TypeScript. So whatever you pass over here, it gets returned. So if the t is passed in cfetch. There the t as promise return in c fetch. We all know fetch takes an URL and options. The options are a type of request in it. These are actually global declare, so I didn't even have to import it. Now the options are actually optional. Now what I did, constant trace equals to await fetch with URL comma options, the same one. Constant data equals to await race dot JSON, and now return data. Now the fact is, it will only work for JSON data. You can have text data or HTML data if you want. I ultimately, it's going to return a string, so you can just put string over here, and it will still work. But I guess by, by default, if you write dot text, it it keeps the intelligence for string. So I have an example for this one, which is in create post. You can check it out. I have the constant trace, which await c fetch instead of fetch. Now here, I can actually pass and generic with response data that I have typed beautifully over here. So what it actually is. Response messages is a union of all the possible messages that you can have on HTTP method. And inside the response schema, we actually have the zero object with code, message, long message that is optional, and the data. So if there is any data that we are returning, now the data type is the same as what we are passing with the generic data, which extends to z dot z type any, and this actually gets returned. Now after response schema, we have the response type with the same data type extended that gets returned with the type of response schema of data type, uh, which is the generic type of response schema. Now I know it's a bit confusing, and it was actually for me too, but you get used to it ultimately. And lastly, we're exporting the response data with the generic of t, and then we have the z dot infer of response type of z type of t. So we have double Double generics, or actually triple, I guess. One, two, three. Yes, triple generics. What are the advantages of it? So we have to see fetch with response data of upload file response. Now this is my custom typed thing, I guess. I believe. Yes. So this is actually custom typed, which I have over here with declare global. Now when I actually pass this request, and if I actually try to give you an example. So for example, let's actually destructure this one. Now first of all, we have all the intelligence for the response data with code, message data, long message. That's the same thing that we had in here with the code, message, long message, and data. So the code is a type of number. We have the messages as the union of messages that we can have. We have the long message as string or undefined because this is optional. And lastly, the data. Now inside this response data, we passed upload file response of array, and that is what we got back. Now if I actually write data over here, and we can just uh, let's say if there is no data, we can have this error. And now if I write data dot, we have the array. So let's actually get the first one, and then dot with the data or error that is typed beautiful over here with data and error. And now inside the data, we can have the key, name, size, and URL. Now this actually comes from here. Upload data, which is this one. Key, URL, name, size, properly typed with cfetch. Isn't that cool? Now that was the first one. Next, I modded another function that is cresponse. If you have watched my previous video, you already know about it. But if you have not, I'm just going to keep it short and explain it quickly. So cresponse is basically a modded next response dot JSON thing. Cresponse with message and long message. That is all you need to send. If you have data, you can just pass the data over here. But this is optional. And if I actually go to the code, we have the cresponse with another generic t, and the t. So whatever we pass in here, data gets its type. Now for every message, we are checking with cases. And if the case matches that particular message type, then we actually set the code for it. So if we have okay, it's going to be 200, or let's say bad request with 400, and all the other codes. 
So you don't have to type it, you can just copy paste this one. Now after that, we have the next response.json with code, message, long message data. And this is actually same type as we are sending back over here with response data. We have the code, message, long message and data. Now next, these are some optional things that you can have or do not have. So these are actually handle client error and handle error. So let's actually go to handle client error. Okay, so this is the authentication page in Post-it and we actually used handle client error. Now handle client error takes an error with unknown and the toast ID that we'll be sending. Now the toast ID is actually optional. You can check it over here. And the error with unknown and toast ID optional, which can be string or undefined. So if we actually go to the code, we have checkings for different types of errors. So if error instance of drizzle error or sort error, or let's say normal error or nothing, then we're just gonna return a default error message with this one where we have something went wrong, try again later. This was the easiest one, I guess. There is nothing so confusing. And we're just mapping all the messages with this one. Now next we have the handle error. Now I actually didn't use it anywhere, but what you are supposed to do with handle error is, this handle logic is supposed to go on your backend. So if I have the route.ts, we're just gonna put a try catch over here. And after wrapping with it try catch, we have the catch with E. And then we can just get it back over here. We can have return handle error with E. And that's it. Now handle error actually takes an error with unknown, which is this one. And now if I actually go to the function, we're first logging the error and then we're checking for the instances. So whether we have a sort error or trestle error or nothing, then we're just gonna return and see response. So feel free to use this function if you want. These are all coded in Post-it. You can just check the repo, I'll link it below. Using this will make you more types it than using normal fetch. But even if you have API routes like normal, then you can use the C response and C fetch. These are way better than normal using fetch when you do not know what is going to get returned. Have a good day. See ya. Peace.